This video introduces the rule arrow in. Arrow in is a box rule. That's because it requires the use of a box. Whenever you're trying to prove a conditional, a line that has an arrow as its main connective, you have to make a box. When you're trying to prove an arrow, you're not trying to prove that P is true and that Q is true. You're trying to prove that there's a relationship between them such that P leads to Q. In order to do that, you have to set up a box that starts with P and goes to Q. In effect, what you're showing is that if you gave me P, if we pretended that P was true, then we could get to Q. So the box itself is proving that P leads to Q, and that's why the box is necessary. Sometimes I like to put an arrow in here and say, well, the rule says if you can show the vertical arrow, then you'll have proved the horizontal arrow. As usual, the best thing is just to go ahead and construct a proof. So the argument that we've got is only got one premise, and C arrow E is the conclusion. So I have it set up over here on the side already. From this point on, we always start proofs by doing as many things at the top as we can. Arrow out, ampersand out, ampersand in. If there's any of those things you can do, you should. So obviously the main connective on this first line is an ampersand. We should just go ahead and break that up. Ampersands are easy. A ampersand C, arrow E. Line 2, A. Justification for both of those is one ampersand out, and we use the ditto marks. Okay, I can check off line 1. Well, line 2. Line 2 is the arrow is the main connective, so I know I'd like to do arrow out. If I had A and C on another line, I could write E. Yeah, I don't have A and C, and I don't have the pieces to build it, so I can't work on it. Line 3, too short to be interesting. Well, at this point, there's no more top-down things that I can do. Since I'm out of top-down things to do, I say I'm stuck at the top, and when you're stuck at the top, you always go to the bottom. And when you go to the bottom, the first thing that you do is identify main connective. I'm going to write it here to emphasize its significance. When you're stuck at the top, go to the bottom and find the main connective. Well, obviously, the main connective here is the arrow. The main connective will tell you what rule to use. And since it's an arrow, we know we're going to want to use arrow in. And every time that you do arrow in, you have to have a box. So that's the first thing I'm going to do, is just make a big box here. Whenever you make a box, it should go from the top of the space all the way to the bottom of the available space. It should fill the whole thing because once we have finished this box, we will be done with the proof. Now, what are we trying to prove? Are we trying to prove that C is true and that E is true? No, we're trying to prove that C leads to E. If C was the case, then E would be the case. And so what we're going to do in this box is put C at the top and E at the bottom. In effect, what I'm going to do is say, let's pretend that C was true. If it was true, then E would also have to be true. And the box itself is showing that C leads to E. Well, C is going to become line 4. And its justification is basically assumption. We're just assuming it's true. But we don't want to get it confused with our other assumptions, so we're going to call it a PA. And a PA stands for provisional assumption. It's an assumption that's good provided that we're inside this box. And we're making it for the rule arrow in, and so I think it's useful to put this information in parentheses after the PA. We have now got the process completely set up. All we have to do is finish the rest of this box. So, quick review. Stuck at the top, we went in the bottom and saw that it was an arrow. That tells us have to do arrow in. So we made a box, and then just mindlessly, we took the entire antecedent and wrote it at the top. The entire conclusion wrote it at the bottom. The first line of every box will be a PA.
Now we just finish the rest of the proof. So we're back up to the top thinking about our top-down rules. Arrow out, ampersand out, ampersand in. So line two, if I could find A and C, I could write E. Oh, well look, now I have the pieces A and C. So it's time to put them together. I use ampersand in, 3, 4 ampersand in, and now that I've done that, I can do the arrow out and get E. Ah, but E was my new goal. So I'm just going to call this line 6, and it will be 2, 5, arrow out, and I'm done. The box now shows if I pretended that C was true, then E would also have to be true. C leads to E. So, line 7 is the conclusion itself, and its justification is actually the entire box. It's 4 through 6, and so that's what I'll write over here, 4-6, and the name of the rule, arrow in. If we're doing this correctly, we'll notice that there is a nice correspondence between the PA and the rule that we mentioned at the top, and then the rule that we use underneath the box should have that correspondence every single time. All right, we have finished the proof. We can go back here one more time and talk about the rule. And notice, of course, I have it written down here what the rule means. To prove a conditional, P arrow Q, to prove something like C arrow E, make a box above it with P at the top as a PA and Q at the bottom as a goal. If you can complete the box, you have proved your conditional. Alright, well, I hope that that made sense. We'll be making lots of boxes.